This video was brought to you by my loyal patrons. Pledge today and receive exclusive perks. Link in the description. Thomas and Friends started life on the screen as a show filmed with physical models on live action sets. And with the show of this nature, naturally many takes of every scene were filmed, sometimes full scenes that were ultimately unneeded. And a lot of that footage ended up on the cutting room floor. One of the most elusive parts of Thomas to me as a kid was all of its deleted scenes. The music videos appealed to me for this reason, because this is where a lot of the unused footage got repurposed, as we get snippets of scenes that didn't make it into the final episodes. Or maybe we get a photo in a book of some scene that we didn't recognize. And even now, in current day, all these years later, we're still finding new props that were built for scenes that never came to fruition. I thought it'd be fun to make a huge video going over all of these elusive deleted scenes and wildly speculate on what episodes they're from, what their context is, and why they were ultimately removed from the final cuts. Before we begin, I should disclaim that this video is only on deleted scenes, not alternate angles or alternate takes or random b-roll that wasn't used. No, just complete scenes that were filmed and removed in editing. I'm also just not gonna cover the deleted scenes from Thomas and the Magic Railroad. There is enough there to be its own video. In fact, I have done a video on all those deleted scenes. You can view it here. I don't think it's worth clogging up this video with all of those. Everything here is purely just me speculating. Do not treat any of my reasonings here as totally true and complete fact because they are not. So I'm just putting that out there now. I don't know everything guys. I wasn't in the editing room. I'm also not claiming this is a video that's covering every deleted scene ever. There's a good few that were left out because they're not really that interesting. I think all the important ones are here though, and that's enough material to give us a full hour and a half video. But of course, if there's some that weren't featured you believe were worthy of being in this, comment them below. And as per usual, we will be going in episode order. So we'll be starting at season one. Kicking off this list is James and the Express. Towards the end of this episode, James successfully pulls the Express and comes to a stop at Maron, or the end of the line as it is in this episode. So Topa Matt tells him a job well done and offers the Express to James from time to time. Which, of course, James is very happy about. Yes, please, answered James. We have two photos from this scene, though they are notably different to what we see in the episode. In the episode, James arrives at the main platform of the station and speaks to only Sir Topham Hatt. But in the photos, he appears to be at Maron's Bay platform, and there's a crowd of people standing around him and Sir Topham. My gut reaction tells me that this is an alternate take of the scene, but perhaps there was more here. After Topham offers James the Express, perhaps James turns around and is now standing at the bay platform to head back home, and a crowd of people come to congratulate him. If this is what was filmed, it was likely cut because, well, we didn't need to see the crowd cheering him. Topham offering James the Express was the only necessary part we needed to see of this climax. Moving on to the very next episode, Thomas and the Guard. In this one, Thomas is impatient and leaves his guard behind at the junction. He has stopped at a signal down the line, much to his annoyance, and the guard finally catches up with them. In the music video, Let's Have a Race, an alternate shot of Thomas stopping at a signal is shown, and on a completely different set from the one seen in the episode. This one has a buffer stop on the left track beside Thomas. Funnily enough, a close-up of Thomas from this shoot is used in the final episode. Bother that signal, said Thomas. What's the matter? I'm not sure on the context of this one. My gut tells me that they simply filmed this scene again on the other sets because the one here was too restrictive. Or maybe they simply forgot to add a detail of some sort. I'm inclined to believe that because this set only appears in this one episode. It's a pretty simple one, and it looks a bit thrown together. I wonder what it is that they forgot or didn't like that made them want to reshoot it. 
Perhaps they didn't do a little stop motion sequence of the guard running up originally, and the scene felt kind of weird without it? Who knows? Next up is Cole. In this episode, Henry suffers steaming problems, and Sir Topham Hat questions what's wrong with him. You had lots of new parts and new paint too, but they've done you no good. He stands on a barrel and speaks to a rather sad looking Henry, alone at the sheds. We have a photo from this scene, in which James is here beside him. My guess for why James was on set at all for this shoot is simply because he was present in the illustration of the book this story is based on. Likely he was just beside Henry, and then steamed off before Sir Topham Hatt spoke to him. They likely cut James from this simply because James was just in the scene right before this one, insulting Henry in the shed before leaving. It'd be kinda weird to cut from a shot of James leaving Henry at the shed, to another shot of James leaving Henry at the shed. Next up is Whistles and Sneezes. In this episode, Henry travels under a bridge some boys are standing on. The naughty boys drop stones on the train, breaking the coach's windows. They've broken our glass! They've broken our glass! sobbed the coaches. Now, we don't have any actual footage for this deleted scene, but we do have photos of a human figure that went unused. Season 1 model maker Jonathan Seville was in possession of several human figures from the show, many of which were identifiable, such as the original Topham, Jeremiah Jobling, etc. One of the figures shown in these photos is of this man, likely a driver or a fireman, with an angry expression and a rather large bump on his head, breaking through a hole in his cap. In the episode, they don't show any people getting hit with stones, but in the original story from the book, it is explicitly mentioned that Henry's fireman got hit on the head. They were silly, stupid boys who thought it'd be fun to drop stones down his funnel. One hit the fireman on the head as he was shoveling coal. No doubt this figure was made for this scene, and the shot went unused maybe because they didn't want to show such a human injury in the series? Guess they got over that by the time season 5 rolled around, huh? The driver was thrown clear. Rotten road, he muttered. Moving on to Season 2 now, with Percy and the Signal. In this episode, Percy is in a rather cheeky mood, and finds joy in playing pranks on the big engines. He gets found out by Sir Topham Hatt, and is punished. But after some time passes, he becomes cheeky again, and decides to brag to Gordon and James. We have a single photo from this episode showing a rather mischievous looking Percy peering out of the leftmost berth of the small engine shed at Tidmouth. I have no doubt this is from this episode, with the original intention being Percy slowly peering out of the shed and observing his surroundings, eyeing his next victim. Which aligns with the narrator's line, But the very next day, Percy was still being cheeky. He spots Gordon and James, and rolls out to gloat to them. Percy is on the same track here as he is in the photo. If footage of this does exist, they likely cut it in favor of this long panning shot instead, which ends on Percy rolling up beside the others. The long pan implies a passage of time, visually cementing that this scene takes place much later. Next up is Percy Takes the Plunge. In this one, Percy rolls up beside Thomas at the harbor, curious what Thomas is looking at. Thomas is looking at a danger sign, warning engines to stay clear of a sunken key. Percy tries to chance going past the sign, and ends up tobogganing into the sea. He's fished out that evening, covered in mud and grime. Well, 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 chuckled Henry. Did you like the water? No. Here we have a photo from the scene of Thomas and Percy together, but strangely, Percy is sad here, and covered in the same mud and grime from after he's fished out of the sea. I have really no idea what's happening here. My guess is they filmed the Thomas and Percy scene after the morning after scene, where Percy is covered in grime, but why would they not clean him off before taking the photo? In the final filmed scene, Percy is clean, so they clearly did know to clean him off. So what happened with the photo? They took the photo, then cleaned him off, and then filmed the scene? I don't know, I couldn't tell ya. It's a mind-boggling one. We have another photo too of Thomas and the sad, dirty Percy on another part of the set. 
I don't think these photos are indicative of any deleted footage. I think this was just a matter of the photographer snapping shots between scenes being shot. It's quite a funny picture though. Percy looks so miserable. Next up is A Close Shave, the infamous episode where Duck, propelled by a runaway train, crashes into a barber shop. For the interior shots of the barber shop where the people inside interact with Duck, a large close-up scale model of Duck is used, so he scales with the people. In the final episode, we see Duck crash from the outside, and we don't cut to the close-up Duck inside until after. But we do have a photo of the scene from inside the barber shop, just moments before the crash, showing the large-scale duck approaching. A pretty ominous shot, honestly. It's very obvious what the context is here, but I wanted to talk about it because this probably means they filmed this from the POV of the barber shop attendants, of the close-up duck quickly approaching them. And it's <laughs> terrifying trying to picture this in motion. I'm sure they didn't use it because it either looked too scary, or because Duck is like going at mock speed when he approaches on the Gage 1 set, and then the cut to a larger Duck going probably a slower speed probably didn't flow right. I'd love to see the footage of this shot, if it exists. We've come to The Missing Coach, the notorious cancelled episode of Season 2. The only episode of the series to be nearly completed and then shelved last minute. Tons of scenes were filmed for it, for which we have evidence of. We've never seen the completed footage from this episode, albeit the few shots that were repurposed in other episodes. The majority of the missing coach lives in photos, so let's just go through everything in order. The railway is busier than ever, and we are presented a shot of several trains passing each other in the yard. This shot was reused for the opening of Saved From Scrap. The fat controller works his engines hard. But they are very proud when he calls them really useful. The shot pans and would have ended on James and the siding, grumbling about working in dirty sidings. We cut to a shot of Topham angrily pointing at James. He tells him to stop complaining and then states he has ordered a new engine from Scotland to come help them all out. The next scene features Topham in his office, receiving the news from the station master that the engine has arrived. There is a problem though. A second engine arrived as well. The disgruntled Topham leaves his office to sort the matter out. Topham meets the engines, Donald and Douglas, in the yard at Tidmouth. The wide shot of the twins was repurposed for the opening of Brake Van. Donald and Douglas are twins and had arrived from Scotland to help the Fat Controller, but only one engine had been expected. He questions them, and they both play dumb. Photos exist of the close-ups of the twins playing dumb. Sir Topham Hatt puts them both on trial, and gives them numbers, 9 and 10. The shot of them receiving their numbers was also repurposed for Brake Van. The twins go to work with Duck, who shows them around and warns them about Gordon and Henry. Two photos exist of their little work montage. That night at the sheds, Gordon and Henry make fun of the twins, thinking that they can't hear them. Donald and Douglas glide back into the shed and frighten the two, putting an end to their snarky comments. Several photos exist of this scene. The next scene would have explained that the Express has a special coach at the end of it that is always detached at Tidmouth and needs to be shunted away. Thomas comes along to collect it, and takes it up his branch line with Annie and Clarabelle. No photos exist of this, as far as we know. One day, Douglas is in the yard and frets over being sent away. He is so distracted that he forgets to detach the special coach, and accidentally shunts it away into the sidings with the express, with all the passengers still inside it. Thomas comes fussing, in a tizzy because he can't find his special coach. It's speculated the shots of Thomas entering Tidmouth Station looking tired and angry from better late than ever were actually filmed for this episode and were repurposed. I doubt this, frankly, as these shots seem very much intended for Better Late Than Ever, complete with Birdie present on set. An angry crowd erupts from the coach and approach Sir Topham Hatt to complain. Realizing his mistake, Douglas and his crew come up with a plan. Feigning innocence, his crew detach his tender to make it seem like he was being serviced and couldn't possibly have been the one to shunt the train away. But Sir Topham Hatt isn't an idiot, and Douglas is found out. This entire episode was cut because it was apparently too confusing for young audiences to follow. 
and I don't entirely disagree with that. Not to mention, Thomas is never ever shown again hauling a third coach with Annie and Clarabelle. This episode getting the boot was probably for the best honestly, though I would love to see the footage, if it still exists out there. It is definitely one of the most highly sought after pieces of Lost Thomas Media. Next up is a fan favorite, Ghost Train. In this episode, Percy is heading home one spooky night. A local farmer's cart got stuck on the crossing, and the farmer went to get help. Percy, none the wiser, approaches the crossing and collides with the cart, getting covered in lime. In the original book this episode is based on, we are shown that the cart was being hauled by a horse, and then rode off to get help after it stuck. In the episode, we just cut to the cart stuck on the line, with no real explanation of how it got there. I think we all just instinctively assumed it was by horse, just like in the book, but this deleted scene proves that wrong. For it was Terence. A scene of Terence hauling the cart was filmed, as this photo shows us, and he was the one that went off to get help. Terence's scene was likely cut from the episode for time. I'm kind of sad he was cut to be honest. I feel like Terence always got the short stick when it came to appearances. Would have been a clever way to include him in a season that he wasn't really in that much. Next up is Wooly Bear. In this one, Percy delivers trucks to the harbor. A crane misfires and accidentally drops a crate of treacle on him. His crew try to clean him up, but to no avail. Percy sets off up the branch line, and the fierce wind blows hay all over him, which unfortunately sticks. Here we have a photo that the wiki claims is from Percy and the Signal, likely because Gordon and James are present. I disagree though, I think this is meant to be Wooly Bear. Percy is clearly covered in some sort of treacle-like substance here, and he ain't happy about it. I think this photo is of a scene that was meant to be placed after Percy leaves the harbor. He delivers his hay, leaves the harbor with empty trucks, and passes through Knapford where the big engines chuckle at his appearance. He leaves the trucks at some point after, and heads up the branch line. They likely cut this scene because it disrupted the flow of the story. They didn't need to show this when they could just cut to Percy being on the branch line. And if we're going to get super technical here, it doesn't match David Mitten's map of Sodor. The hayfields are on the Brendam branch en route to the harbor. Percy would have passed through them before reaching Knapford, and perhaps that also played a part in why it was cut. Moving on to Season 3 now, with Gordon and the Famous Visitor. And this episode has two deleted scenes we gotta talk about. In this episode, a celebrity engine called City of Truro visits Sodor, famous for being the first engine to go 100 miles an hour. Gordon is jealous of Truro, and speaks illy of him. I never boast, but I'd say that 100 miles an hour would be easy for me. He later tries to go 100 miles an hour himself just to prove he can, and things don't exactly work out. In the final episode, we only see Truro in two scenes. The opening scene during the exhibition on the turntable, and that night when he speaks to the engines. He's already left when we cut to the scene next morning. A photo from this scene shows that they did indeed film this scene with Truro, beside Gordon and Thomas here. His face is purposely off camera, as he doesn't have one. And what's likely going on here is Truro saying his goodbyes and leaving which aligns with the narrator's line, He left early next morning. After he departs, Duck rolls up in his spot as Gordon starts to complain. I imagine this was cut for time, simply because it was easier to just have the narrator say that Truro left and move on. Would have been pretty neat to see Truro in motion though. Our next deleted scene is when Gordon passes Duck and Edward trying to go 100 miles an hour. This occurs in the episode in the yard at Wellsworth. Duck shunts some trucks into the sidings, and then Gordon whooshes by them. Gordon's train rocketed past and was gone. Duck chuckles, and the scene ends. Some photos suggest an entire alternate version of this scene was filmed on a different part of the set, right in Wellsward Station. Edward is at the right platform, and Duck pulls up on the middle line. Gordon whooshes past in the opposite direction on the left track, and we cut to a rather unamused Duck. I believe what we're seeing here is not evidence of a deleted scene, but rather everything being restaged exclusively for photos. 
There are no photos from the scene as it appeared in the episode, so part of me thinks maybe they for some reason didn't take photos during the film shoot and restaged everything at a later time. But then that begs the question, why redo it in a new location? Why not the same part of the set as before? It's a strange one, one I don't have a definitive answer for. If anyone has a better explanation, comment it below. Moving on to Thomas, Percy, and the Dragon now. In this one, Sir Topham Hatt comes to the sheds and sends Thomas to collect a special from the harbor. We later find out the special is... Cinders and ashes! It's a dragon! In the episode, we cut from Thomas at the sheds to Percy shunting trucks at Lower Suttery, and we never see Thomas depart for the harbor. We do see it, though, in a deleted shot that was reused in the music video for Thomas's anthem. Here we see Thomas leaving the shed yard and passing Percy, who is about to depart to Lower Suttery. A photo also exists of this shot, which has been used in several books. It's such a quick little shot, and I'm sure it was cut just for time. They don't really have to show Thomas leaving for us to know how he ended up at the harbor that night. Next up is The Trouble with Mud, and the deleted scene in this is a mind-boggling one. In this episode, James takes over the express for Gordon one day. Stormy weather and leaves on the track have made the hill difficult to climb. James slips on the leaves, and his heavy train pulls him back down the hill to the bottom. Luckily, good old Gordon is there and helps assist by pushing the train. They reach the top, and James goes on his way. In the final episode, the sky is blue, and it seems the storm has passed. James's train is made up of the Red Express coaches. Photos of this scene suggest an entirely alternate version of it was filmed. The weather is still stormy, and James is pulling the Green Express coaches. We know this probably was not something staged exclusively for photos, like we can assume for the previous Famous Visitor example, as a shot from this shoot appears in the final episode with the weather depicted as stormy. So, what happened here? Well, I have a theory. It's the coaches. Someone messed up and gave James the Green Express coaches in the first shoot, which of course isn't consistent with earlier, when he departed the yard, pulling the red ones. They must have realized their mistake too late, and simply reshot the entire scene with the correct red coaches. Why the change to a blue sky, I have no idea. The stormy atmosphere fits the scene better in my opinion. And funnily enough, no photos of the reshot scene with the red coaches exist. At least as far as I can find. Truly a bizarre scenario here. One will probably never know the full story behind. Up next is Edward, Trevor, and the Really Useful Party. This one is interesting. In this one, Trevor is excited about a garden party being put on by the vicar, where he is to give rides to visitors. He tells Edward the party is to help raise funds to send the local children on a trip to the sea. In the scene after, Edward is distraught and wishes he could do something for the party, and finds a way when the vicar forgets to put up the posters. Edward becomes a traveling billboard, with ads for the party plastered all over him. A photo we have shows that Diesel was meant to appear in the first scene of this episode, but was cut out. Judging by his devilish expression and Edward and Trevor's sad faces, I can only assume Diesel is causing trouble here, likely putting down the party and saying something along the lines of, no one would want to come to pay money to ride an old steam tractor, and then he strolls away cackling to himself. This would have led into the next scene and explained why Edward looks so distraught. I assume this was cut because there wasn't really a point to it. We find out later that the vicar forgot to put up posters, and the conflict and solution of the story is derived from that. Adding another layer of Diesel putting down the party simply wasn't needed. Not to mention how completely random it'd be for Diesel to just appear at the orchard just out of the blue. Next up is Buzz Buzz, the infamous episode where James gets stung by a bee. James is rude to Boko one day and calls him a Buzzbox Diesel. Duck takes offense and defends Boko. Later, a swarm of bees break loose from their hive and attach themselves to James's warm boiler. After countless attempts to get them off, James's crew take him to the orchard, where they quickly scatter. His driver says, What you need now is a good hose down. And then we cut to a scene later that evening at the sheds. 
An entire scene was meant to take place before this one though, as these photos show. James goes off to the harbor where he is given his hose down. Behind him, Boko and Duck chuckle at his dilemma. Solid payback for James's rude remarks to Boko earlier in the episode. We don't know what they're saying here, but if I had to guess, the dialogue was likely similar to what it was in the original book. They were talking about a new kind of beehive on wheels. It was red, they said. Then they all said, buzz, 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 and laughed a lot. Like most of these scenes, this was likely cut for time. While it is satisfying to see Boko get some payback on James, the producers probably thought it was not totally necessary. James clearly learned his lesson after the whole ordeal. Personally, I would have liked to see it included to some extent, and had that sappy ending line cut out instead. But instead, they decided to call James the bee's knees, which means they thought he was more useful than ever. On to a favorite of mine, Thomas and Percy's Christmas Adventure, a rather large-scale episode packed into four and a half minutes. In this one, an early blizzard strikes Sodor. On Christmas Eve, Thomas and Percy team up to get a rescue team to a distressed Snowden village. The opening of the episode establishes the mountain village is a special place in the heart of Sodor, and Thomas sometimes travels there. It's a quick intro though, and footage reused in several music videos reveals it was meant to have a much larger intro. Shots of Thomas entering the village were filmed, as well as one from his point of view. They probably cut these scenes to make time for the rest of the adventure that occurs in the episode, as there is a lot that happens in this one. I also wouldn't be surprised if some of these shots were specially shot, shot with the intention of being used in a music video and other promotional material, rather than in the episode itself. There is a sort of cinematic feeling to them, especially this one of Thomas departing. Let's move on to Season 4 and talk about the narrow gauge engines. The first episode we will talk about is Four Little Engines. This episode has a wonderful little introduction to the Scarlowy Railway and introduces us to the four engines that run it, Scarlowy Andronaeus and Sir Handel and Peter Sam. We're introduced to them working, and then it cuts to a scene of Edward going to the works, where he meets Scarlowy resting at the shed. We have two deleted scenes to look at here. Our first is a photo that the wiki claims is from this episode. This wonderful shot of all four engines together at the sheds. You're probably wondering, what on earth is this scene? Where would this have appeared? Well, I don't think it's actually from any scene in the episode itself. They did this a lot in season four took photos of the episode's principal characters together, since there really isn't one scene in the episode that they all appear at once, and I think that's what this photo is. This photo was likely taken after the main shoot, when they took a bunch of publicity photos on this set. It's also the same time that they did the engine's name board shots. Reneas and Sir Handel's faces being swapped is the dead giveaway. The next photo is this one of Sir Handel, grumbling to his crew about... something. Now the wiki says that this is from A Bad Day for Sir Handel, but I think it's actually Four Little Engines. The set here seems to be Renea Station, the one with two tracks and two platforms by the waterfall. Sir Handel is also pulling trucks here. At the beginning of the episode, Sir Handel is also pulling trucks at Renea Station. His angry expression here suggests maybe there was more to this quick scene. Perhaps him complaining about hauling trucks while Peter Sam gets nice coaches? What throws me though is that Sir Handel is on a different track here than he is in the footage, so really it's anyone's guess. I suppose it could have been staged just for the photo, to get a shot of Sir Handel grumbling pulling trucks. Who knows? Moving on to Steamroller now. In this one, Sir Handel is being his pompous usual self, so Scarlo we suggests that he take on George. Who's George? That steamroller over there, replied Scarloey. It's a battle of bronze and no brains, as Sir Handel takes on the steamroller, and well, no one really wins. Ah, that was your fault. No, it wasn't, it was yours. This photo shows what looks like a deleted scene from the first scene of this episode, with George right beside the engines in the yard. I am more than certain that this is not a deleted scene, and yet another photo taken after the fact with the episode's main characters in it. 
I mean, how did George even get to that spot? He's totally surrounded by tracks. Next up, passengers and polish. When part of Scarloe's train derails, he goes on to the next station with his undamaged coaches, and Duncan comes along to clean up the mess. Once back on the line, he then takes the passengers in the rear coaches home. Duncan, being Duncan, is of course not at all happy about this. We have a photo showing a rather cheerful Duncan at the crash site with Scarloe also present. Mm, gonna say also not a deleted scene, but just another scene staged for photos to get a promo shot from this episode with both of the story's two main characters in it. This one is kinda weird to look at. So surreal to see Duncan smiling about extra work. On to Gallant Old Engine now, another fan favorite. Duncan complains about passengers, so Scarloe tells him a story about Reneus and how he bravely got his passengers home in bad conditions. During the present day events of the episode, Reneus is away being repaired, and he makes his grand return home at the end of the episode. Yet, we have this photo showing Reneus clearly present at the sheds, while Scarloe tells Duncan his tale. You all know the drill with this. I have no doubt this is not actually a deleted scene, but was yet another photo taken after the fact, just to get a shot with the story's three main characters together. Reneus is, again, wearing Sir Handel's face here which is just another little clue that this was taken after the main shoot, around the time when they did the characters' name boards. Moving on to Paint Pots and Queens, which we have two deleted scenes to talk about. In this one, Thomas and Gordon are making their way home at sunset following the events of the episode, Down the Mine. When they arrive at the sheds, they discover everything is being repainted and decked out with flags, because the Queen of England is visiting Sodor. After some shenanigans, Gordon is chosen to haul the royal train. On the day of, he pulls the train into the big station wearing the royal coat of arms, and is welcomed warmly. In the music video, Five New Engines in the Shed, this shot is shown. It's a POV shot traveling through what looks like Wellsworth Station being decorated with flags at sunset. I think this is meant to be Thomas's POV, and him and Gordon were to pass through Wellsworth on their journey home at the beginning of the episode likely being the first time they notice everything being decorated. If I had to guess, this was cut simply for time. They didn't really need to show Thomas and Gordon reacting to two places being decorated. Just the sheds alone was enough to get the point across. Bus my buffers, said Thomas. What's happening? In the music video, Sir Topham Hat, we get this unused shot of Gordon departing the big station with the royal train. This never occurred in the episode as we only ever see Gordon enter the station, and the episode ends before the royal train leaves. When the Queen thanks Gordon, he is positioned in the other direction though, ready to depart. I bet this shot of Gordon leaving was meant to be the final shot of the episode. The engines all give their whistle salute as they watch the Queen leave. Though I'm sure it was ultimately cut, because showing a group shot of all the engines suited the narrator's final line much better. No engines ever felt prouder than those on the Fat Controller's Railway. Moving on to Season 5 now, and this one is gonna be interesting, simply because we have all the unused footage. Thanks to Thomas Tank merch, all of the rushes for this season are public. We have just about every bit of footage that they filmed for this season, and evidence of every deleted scene. Well, almost all of them. I'll get to that. Still though, we don't know what the dialogue or the context is meant to be for a lot of these extra scenes, so let's speculate. Let's start Season 5 off with a bang. A better view for Gordon. In this one, Gordon is on his way to the opening of the new station, with Sir Topham Hat in his cab. As he approaches, they find out his brakes have jammed and he can't stop. Gordon plows through the station wall and suffers much damage. We later find out that his driver broke his arm and Sir Topham Hat got a black eye. A shot from the rushes shows the three in Gordon's cab after the crash, his driver and fireman fallen on the floor and Sir Topham Hat head banged onto Gordon's back head. No doubt, that's how he got his black eye. This is such a crazy shot, and I'm sure they didn't use it because it was a little too violent for this show. We see the crew with their patched up injuries after the crash, 
And that was enough to show the audience that they got hurt. On to Lady Hat's birthday party, which has a small, unused scene. In this episode, Sir Topham Hat goes through hell and high water just to get to his wife's birthday party, completely ruining his new suit and appearance on the way. But it doesn't matter to him, he just needs to get there. When he arrives at the station, he does make a quick stop to pick up a bouquet of flowers for his wife and rushes off. Good luck, called Thomas. The rushes include a couple extra shots of Topham buying the flowers. We get this shot of him talking with the florist, and then this close-up of the florist giggling. No doubt she is meant to be chuckling at the controller's appearance. I kind of doubt there was any dialogue meant to be here. Likely this would have just been some quick shots that were shown. As cute as this little interaction is, I'm sure it was cut because it slowed the sequence down. Topham is in a rush in this part of the episode, and showing extra shots would have disrupted the flow. They only needed the one shot of him at the flower stand to get the point across that he was hurriedly buying flowers for his wife. Up next is Ba, another episode with two deleted scenes. In this one, a competition for best dressed station is occurring on the island. Maithwaite has been decked with flowers. Percy arrives with passengers. Maithwaite will definitely win first prize, decided Percy. He goes off to the siding for a rest but is rudely interrupted when some naughty boys break into the station and trash the place. The rushes show a lot of extra footage of Percy collecting the passengers at Kirk Ronan before heading up to Maithwaite. Some of these shots were repurposed for the music video, Percy's Seaside Trip. We also have this extra shot of Percy leaving his coaches behind and then moving off to the siding for his rest. Pretty boring assumption here, but these were all probably left out simply for time. I do kind of wish they kept the shots of Percy collecting the passengers though, just so it was a little clearer that the people on the platform were from his train. I literally never made the connection until writing this script that the people trying to get into the waiting room were the passengers from Percy's train. The final episode doesn't really specify where they came from. I guess they didn't really need to. It's not all that important to the story, so I can understand why the shots were cut. There are also these shots of the people on the platform coaxing the ram out of the station with a carrot to save the boys inside, which no doubt would have been stitched together to form a little stop-motion sequence. Likely, this was also nixed for time, so they could cut from the reveal that the boys were the culprits to the shot of them apologizing for their delinquency. On to Haunted Henry now. Henry is taking a train up to an old station by the lake along an abandoned line. In the night, he and his crew get spooked by strange happenings. A light moves within the station building that they can't explain. Henry is convinced what he saw was a ghost, and he reverses back down the line. The next day, his crew tell him that they are to go up the old line again that night, much to Henry's displeasure. We have a photo from this episode of what looks like Gordon taunting Henry the morning after the sighting likely Henry telling him about the ghost and Gordon making fun of him for thinking that he saw one. Henry, of course, isn't happy about it. This scene never occurs in the episode. It seems that this scene was filmed on the Tidness Shed set, on the sidings over on the right side where the water tower is. And the rushes of everything filmed on the Tidness Shed set is sadly the only of season 5 that we do not have, meaning we only have this single photo for this scene to go off of. It's pretty clear that this one was also cut for time. Haunted Henry is another pretty jammed packed episode where a lot happens. There simply wasn't time for a scene of Gordon teasing Henry. It doesn't really add too much to the story either, since Gordon is never proven wrong at any point. On to Oliver's Find. Oliver is feeling rather depressed. He's tired of the same routine and longs for a nice run. The trucks get to him one day and Oliver goes a bit too far slamming them into the turntable and putting it out of commission. Sir Topham Hatt visits him that night and gives him a new job to help clear his smoke box. The Rushes present us this scene of Oliver, James, and Henry that went unused. James and Henry are rather angry, and Oliver looks unhappy. Behind them are long lines of trucks. Pretty clear what's going on here. The loss of the turntable has caused confusion in the yard and Henry and James grumble to Oliver that they have to wait ages for their trains now, all because of his clumsiness. As is the case with most of these, I'm sure this whole scene was cut for time. 
They probably thought they didn't have to show the consequences of the broken turntable when they could just have this workman say them in a quick sentence. You silly engine, shouted a workman. It'll take a long time to repair this turntable, which will cause confusion and delay. Done, now moving on to the next step of the story. Pretty efficient for the story, to be honest, because the broken turntable is never relevant again. So I can understand why they probably felt they didn't have to dwell on it. I like the scene, though, and I do wish it was kept in to some extent. Next up is Sir Topham Hatt's Holiday, a wonderful little episode focused on the Hatt family. In this one, Sir Topham Hatt tries to take his family on holiday, but trouble lurks around every corner. First, Lady Hatt is unimpressed with how shabby Annie and Clarabelle look. Then, a daredevil pilot flies his biplane too low and nearly hits them. Then their riverboat gets stuck on a mud bank. Nothing goes right. We have two deleted scenes to talk about here. Our first deleted scene occurs right at the very beginning of the episode. The Hat family all gather at Callan Station to board Thomas's train, where he then transports them to the beach. I'm sure this scene was cut because it didn't add anything. They could simply show Thomas already traveling to the beach, with the narrator telling us that the Hat family are on board. Much more efficient that way. The next deleted scene is a short one, but it's very funny. When Tiger Moth flies too low, Sir Topham Hat dives onto the grass to avoid being hit. The rushes show these extra shots. This one showing Topham was the only of the family to get scared and dive, which is hilarious. They're looking at him like, bro, what are you doing? Then there's two shots of Topham getting back on his feet and looking down at his trousers, which now have giant grass stains on them. I don't know what it is about this shot, but the way it's framed is just so funny. He looks so sad. If I had to guess, this little moment wasn't nixed because of a runtime issue. It was probably removed because it didn't flow with the character's dialogue. Topham asks who the plane was while still on the ground. What was that? Harold tells him the plane is called Tiger Moth. Uh, that's Tiger Moth, grumbled Harold. It's rude and flies much too low. And Topham responds, So I can see. Please take us up, Harold, before there's another disturbance. There isn't really an appropriate moment here to have Topham stop and look down at his pants. Next up is a surprise for Percy. In this one, Percy is tired of his daily routine of transporting coal trucks and complains to everyone he comes across how boring his life is. He complains to Bertie, It's just coal, 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 and trucks, trucks, trucks. I'm bored, bored, bored. And then he complains to Toby. Hello, Percy. How are things? Asked Toby. Boring. Then he goes off to the coal mine to collect more trucks, and a new adventure begins. But what if I told you that they filmed another scene of Percy complaining to a third character? At least, that's what I assume is happening here. The Rushes present us this scene that takes place at Brendam Docks at night, where a sad Percy is seen talking to a rather happy-looking Thomas. To me, it looks like Percy is complaining to Thomas about his boring life, and Thomas is either having him look on the brighter side of things, or just teasing him for complaining. It's also possible this is a scene that was meant to be at the beginning of the episode. Thomas, or one of the engine's crew, tells Percy he'll be working at the coal mines all week. Percy is upset about it, and Thomas tells him to chin up. Whatever the context of the scene is, I can see why it was cut. In both scenarios, it's just padding. The story didn't need a third scene of Percy complaining to someone for the audience to get the point that he's bored. Nor did we need a scene early on to establish he'll be working at the coal mines all week, when they can just start the story with him already working at the coal mines. On to Busy Going Backwards Now, a rare, Toad-focused episode. In this one, Toad wishes to go forwards for a change, instead of being at the end of trains. The trucks make his wish come true one day, when they break away on the hill, and Toad is taken on the right of his life. This one deleted scene is also a very quick one, and to the average viewer, it looks like a mistake. The rushes show us this take of Toad's train racing out of Crosby Yard. The end truck falls off the tracks and topples over. Was... was that meant to happen? Interestingly enough, it was. According to the storyboards, as drawn by Robert Galgaliers, the end trucks are depicted as falling off the train when they round the points at Crosby. There's even a note here saying, two trucks leave the rails and crash. No doubt that's what's being depicted here in this shot. I can understand why they cut it though. 
It's very unnatural looking. It definitely looks like a toy the way it just falls off the tracks like that. It looks like someone just poked it. I'm sure director David Mitten wasn't happy with the end result and opted to just not use it in the final edit. Up next is my favorite episode of Season 5, Duncan Gets Spooked. In this one, Peter Sam's trucks break away from him and fall off the old iron bridge into the ravine below. That evening, Duncan insults Peter Sam for being so reckless and tells him the ghost of the trucks will come back to spook him. Woo -hoo -hoo! To get back at him, Rusty tells Duncan the story of an engine that fell off the bridge a long time ago and whose ghost haunts the area now. This is another rather big episode where a lot happens, and of course that means things had to be cut. As the rushes show us, there was a whole scene at the beginning of the episode showing Peter Sam working. Peter Sam is overworked with his heavy load and seems to run low on water. His driver assures him Rusty will be along soon to help, and sure enough, Rusty pulls up and pushes Peter Sam up the line to the next water tower. This scene does occur in the final episode, but it was trimmed down immensely. Judging by the close-ups of Peter Sam and his driver present here, I'm sure Peter Sam had some dialogue that was cut. A shame, as this was his only appearance all season. Ultimately, this scene is unimportant to the overall story, which is about Duncan, so I can understand why they trimmed it. All that ultimately needed to happen here story-wise was Peter Sam's trucks had to break away. Phew! Season 5 was a big one. Heading into Season 6 now with Harvey to the rescue. In this episode, Harvey arrives to Sodor and the other engines think he looks strange. They say mean things about him in the shed that night and poor Harvey overhears them. The next day, Harvey proves his value when he rescues Percy and that night, the engines all admit they were wrong to judge him and welcome him to the railway. We do have some Season 6 rushes and in these depict some shots of the night scene at the shed all of which feature shots of the engines with angry expressions. We even get this shot of Thomas and Harvey looking rather sad. Two of these shots, the one of Henry and the one of Thomas and Harvey, were reused in the music video, There Once Was an Engine Who Ran Away. Considering the night scene is when the engines are meant to be apologizing to Harvey, I'm a little confused as to why this was filmed with them wearing angry expressions. If I had to guess, perhaps the scene originally started with the engines all still judging Harvey until Percy or Thomas tells them what he did that day and then upon hearing this, the engines all change their tune. I don't know, I, I don't really like this episode because everyone is so out of character here, so who knows what they were trying to do. I suspect whatever happened here was cut to help with the flow and simplicity of the story. Naturally, after you have a scene of Harvey proving himself, you would then cut to a new scene of everyone congratulating him. On to It's Only Snow, the episode where Thomas has a completely different snowplow for some reason. In this one, it snows heavily one night. The next day, Thomas is fitted with a snowplow and then sets off to collect a Christmas tree to take to the village on Toby's line. He collects the tree from Callan and meets Edward, and then he heads off to meet Toby at Maithwaite. A deleted shot used in the Winter Wonderland music video shows an alternate version of this scene. Here, Thomas is depicted collecting the tree from the docks, and the character he meets is Salty. I think this is more than likely just a completely unrelated shot. Specially shot B-roll with a new character present to be used in a music video. But part of me also likes humoring the idea that this was intended for this episode. And the reason they refilmed it at Callan later on is because the crew forgot to fit Thomas with the snowplow. Perhaps they realized their mistake while the Callan set was up, so they did a hasty reshoot with Edward there instead. Surprisingly, not a lot of deleted scenes in Season 6. Moving on to Season 7 now with Gordon and Spencer. This is the episode where Spencer arrives to Sodor and takes Gordon's crown. Gordon, en route to meet the Duke and Duchess of Boxford, is diverted into a siding to allow another train to pass. To his shock, Spencer flies by and leaves him speechless. Gordon returns to the yard and meets the newcomer. A deleted shot is used in the music video, The Whistle Song, showing James passing Gordon in the siding, coming from the other direction. 
I have no doubt what's happening here is James is shouting to Gordon something about Spencer passing. It could be anything, really. Personally, I like to think that it was a taunt, like, Did you see that? Looks like you've finally been outmatched, Gordon. Ha <laughs> ha. And then he cackles as he goes on his way, leaving Gordon at a loss for words. I assume this was cut just to speed things along. In the very next scene, James is at the yard admiring Spencer, and he is the one to tell Gordon who he is. This is Spencer. He's the fastest engine in the world. So they probably thought they didn't need to have a scene with James right before this one. Also kind of weird how James beat Gordon to the yard since he was going the other direction just a moment ago. Up next is three cheers for Thomas. Sports day is happening at the football field on Thomas's branch line, and Thomas and Percy are busy bringing children and supplies there. Percy meets Thomas at the yard and tells him he is bringing Sir Topham Hat there later. Thomas tells him that he wants a medal like the children at the event, and Bertie suggests a race. Percy leaves before the two speed off. A shot in the music video, Five New Engines in the Shed, shows that Harvey was present on the set when this scene was filmed. He is on the shed track, with Thomas and Percy beside him. Harvey is not present at the shed when Percy arrives in the wide shot, so this deleted scene is a little bizarre. Also note how the water tower is magically in a new spot, conveniently placed to not block Harvey from view of the camera. I'm inclined to believe that this actually isn't a deleted scene, but just some random b-roll of a new character on a random set of the season, all filmed knowing that they would be used in music videos. We saw them do this previously in season 5 with the music video Donald's Duck, where they'd film random scenes of the season but with Gilly the Duck present all to be used in a music video separate from the episodes. Season 7 saw a lot of new characters randomly placed on sets throughout the season. Another example of this is this one of Murdoch, running through what is a scene clearly set up for Gordon and Spencer. Next up is Toby's Windmill. In this one, a storm damages a windmill on Toby's line that he is quite fond of. The miller can't afford the repairs, leaving Toby trying to think of a way to help. He later comes across a fallen tree on the line that Harvey is trying to clear away. Toby has the brilliant idea to use the wood from the tree to mend the windmill. And with that, the tree is loaded onto a flatbed and Toby takes it away. A shot in Five New Engines in the Shed shows Harvey on this set hauling the same tree on the flatbed. At first, I did think this was a deleted scene showing Harvey bringing the second chunk of the tree to the windmill. And while it could be that, I'm inclined to believe that this is just yet another case of them getting random shots of the new characters on random sets for music videos. Harvey was already on set for this episode shoot, so maybe they just figured they'd get a random run by of him pulling the flatbed. On further investigation, I'm more than sure that this is the case, because they also shot some b-roll of Emily on this set from the same angle. Moving on to Salty's stormy tail now. In this one, Salty and Fergus are out heading home in a storm when they are stopped by a lighthouse in distress. Working together, Fergus uses his flywheel to get the light working again. They return to the docks the next morning where they find a crowd waiting there to thank them. A shot is shown in Five New Engines in the Shed where Emily passes the same spot of the docks where Salty and Fergus arrive, just in the other direction. At first, I thought that this was just a random shot of Emily on the same set, but on further inspection, I discovered it is exactly the same shot. In the episode, right after Fergus passes the camera, and right before it cuts to the next shot, Emily's buffer appears behind the gantry crane, meaning what was filmed was Emily passes the duo as they arrive. Why? Well, I don't really know. I think it was just a random run-by of a character passing the camera. They did this many times this season, like in What's the Matter with Henry, where Salty passes the camera with a train before Emily backs into the frame. It might be somehow connected to Emily's scene earlier in the episode. Perhaps upon seeing the duo return, she goes to tell Thomas and Percy, and that's why they show up at the end? Eh, I don't know, it's possible, I suppose. But I don't know, I kind of doubt it. I think they used Emily for this run by simply because they had her out on set for the Brendam Dock shoot. Up next is Something Fishy, the second of the Arthur Saga. At the beginning of this episode, the narrator introduces us to Arthur, 
and tells us he is still new to the railway and learning his way around. We are presented with this little montage of Arthur doing random jobs around the island. The five new engines in the shed music video presents us with a bunch more shots of Arthur doing random jobs, including hauling wagons at the cement works, hauling oil tankers, and my favorite, the express coaches. While I'm sure most of these are just random b-roll to be used in music videos, it is possible that some of these were filmed with a little work montage and something fishy in mind, and then they just went with the best shots that they think work best. This definitely makes me wish that there was an episode about Arthur pulling the express at some point though. Seeing a big tank engine with the express coaches activates the happy neurons in my monkey brain. Jumping into season 8 now and there is a lot to cover from this season. Starting with Emily's adventure. In this one, Emily is taking supplies to the farm to help mend the barn roof after a storm. A fallen tree is on her line, and she rushes poor Trevor to clear it so she can pass. Over the course of the episode, Emily learns to ask nicely when she wants something. Emily was pleased. She'd arrived on time. Asking nicely was all she'd had to do. And the episode ends there. A deleted scene used in the A World Around You music video shows Emily heading home that night, and she comes across Thomas and Trevor on the way. A photo was also taken of this scene. Going by Emily's angry expression and Trevor's sad one, I think what is happening here is that Emily whistles or shouts at Trevor to wait so she can pass, likely then cutting to Thomas or the narrator who say something along the lines of, well I guess some things never change. In the extended cut of the World Around You music video, a longer take of Emily approaching Trevor is used, and you can tell that they really poorly tracked a picture of Emily's neutral expression over her angry one here, to hide the fact that Emily is actually mad in this shot. The shorter version of the music video cuts the shot before her face comes properly into view. I assume this scene was deleted because it being present would have taken away from the moral about asking nicely. I mean, this is the hit era we're talking about now. On to Thomas Saves the Day. In this one, Thomas doesn't like traveling around a difficult bend in the track. Annie and Clarabelle always soothe him and give him confidence when he traverses it. Later, Thomas is informed by Sir Topham that Annie and Clarabelle have to go in for their refit, and he will have to use other coaches for a while. Thomas is upset about being apart from his coaches, he later leaves them at the works. A deleted scene was filmed that took place after Thomas found out about the bad news. He comes across Gordon and Henry and, from what I can assume, tells them he's worried about traversing the difficult bend without Annie and Clarabelle. Gordon scoffs him and Henry comforts him. I assume this was cut simply because it added nothing new to the story. Gordon and Henry do not appear again and we don't learn anything new about Thomas's fear. Thomas reiterates his fear when he drops Annie and Clarabelle off, meaning they could just cut the Gordon and Henry scene. What's interesting is that this deleted scene was featured in its entirety as a bonus feature on a DVD game. All the footage is here, although with new narration to change its context. Now Thomas is worried about being late to collect Sir Topham. Gordon tells him he's never late, and Henry cheers him on. What a clever idea repurposing unused footage in a new context as a bonus feature. I love that. On to Edward the Great now, another episode with two deleted scenes. In this retelling of the classic story, The Tortoise and the Hare, Edward and Spencer race each other to the Duke and Duchess's summer house. Spencer, being a streamlined engine built for speed, is obviously much faster than Edward and doesn't take the race seriously. Our first deleted scene is this photo, showing Spencer stopped at a water tower. Edward comes up beside him, and it appears Spencer insults him, much to Edward's offense. I assume this scene would have occurred early on, shortly after the race began at Knapford. Spencer takes off again soon after Edward passes him, leaving a rather sad Edward behind, and leading into the next scene of Edward climbing the hill. It would also explain why Spencer is not really that far ahead of him when he sees him in the distance at the top. I can only assume that this was cut because it was repetitive. Edward passes Spencer two other times in this episode. They didn't really need it to occur a third time. Our next deleted scene is the one that everyone loves. The one that featured Donald and Douglas. 
In the music video, A World Around You, a shot is present of Edward with the luggage car, passing Donald and Douglas in a siding at the bottom of Gordon's Hill before he begins his ascend. This scene was maintained in the Story Library adaptation of this episode, where the dialogue was revealed. But Donald and Douglas were waiting at the junction. They had heard about the race. Hooray for Edward, cried Donald. He's a fast-rate engine, added Douglas. This made Edward feel much better. Donald and Douglas's cheers give Edward the boost of confidence he needs to get over the hill. I assume that close-ups of each engine were also filmed, for when they would have said their lines. I have no idea why they cut this, to be honest, because it's such a short scene, and who wouldn't like seeing a Donald and Douglas cameo, right? Up next is Spick and Span. In this one, Thomas and Percy are determined to stay clean for an inspection happening later that day, where the cleanest engine would be awarded a prize. But an incident at the quarry leaves Thomas covered in dust. Thomas races off to the washdown, only to be turned away because Emily is already there. The scene fades to later on, when Thomas and Percy are hauling their train to the docks. A deleted scene was filmed that took place after Thomas met Emily. Thomas returns to the quarry, still dirty, and a worried Percy frets about him not winning first prize. But Thomas assures him that he'll be fine, and they set off with their train. I'm sure that this was a scene that was cut simply for time, as they needed to get on to the next incident that gets the pair even more dirty. Just like the Thomas Saves the Day scene earlier, this deleted scene, in its entirety, was released as a bonus feature on a DVD game, but again with new narration to change its context. It's pretty similar to before, except now Thomas is to collect Sir Topham later. Percy is worried that Thomas is too dirty for the job, but Thomas assures him that even a dirty engine can be really useful. Next up is Thomas and the Circus. In this episode, Thomas collects the circus train from the docks. When he arrives, the docks is all in chaos, with performers and colorful crates everywhere. The train gets sorted off-screen, and Thomas backs down onto it. Before he departs, Salty pulls up and asks Thomas if he wants help, but Thomas refuses it. In the music video Pride, a quick unused shot from this episode shows Salty pulling Annie and Clarabelle and some circus wagons into place at the docks. I assume that this was a part of a montage of Thomas and Salty sorting the train out together, getting it ready for departure. In the final episode, the area goes from chaos to strangely organized in the matter of a quick fade transition. I assume that this whole scene was cut for time, but man, they should have kept it. This is such a nothing episode as it is. A fun little montage of Thomas and Salty working together would have at least given it a nice highlight. Onto Emily's new route, which we again have two deleted scenes to talk about. In this one, Sir Topham Hat gives Emily a new job, delivering flour. Emily is happy about her new job, until she hears from James that he was given the Black Lock Run. Our first deleted scene comes right at the beginning. The episode originally opened with Emily shunting wagons at the docks with Salty. She's bored with her work, so Salty tries to cheer her up with one of his stories. The book adaptation of this episode reveals his dialogue. It's about a lighthouse, a box of oranges, and a fishing rod. It all started when... While Salty seems to enjoy his story, Emily stops listening and longs for something different. She gets her wish the very next day, and we fade to the scene of Topham presenting her with a new job. We have several photos from this deleted scene, and the majority of it is kept in the book adaptation. Salty's close-up is also reused in a music video in Calling All Engines. I assume this whole scene was cut because it didn't really add anything to the story. We didn't really need to know that Emily was bored before getting the new job. It's a shame, though, that Season 8 cut so many of the secondary characters' scenes. We were robbed of Donald and Douglas, and so much fun Salty material. Our second deleted scene comes at the end. Emily meets up with Thomas at Blacklock while the sun is setting. Some deleted shots of Emily's journey to the lock are present in the music video, Patience. She passes Gordon and Percy looking up at the hot air balloon in the sky. After she meets Thomas, the two look out on the lock and also see the hot air balloon in the distance above the water. Not really missing out on much with these shots, 
and I'm sure that they were just cut for time. This would have been the hot air balloon's only appearance this season if they were kept in. On to Thomas to the rescue. In this one, Thomas is sent to the quarry for a while to help Mavis complete a big order. When Thomas arrives, he discovers that Diesel is also there to help. In the music video, Trying, we get this random shot of Bill and Ben working at the quarry with Mavis. According to a DVD game on the Steamies vs. Diesel's DVD, Bill and Ben were originally meant to appear in this episode. The pair have to go away for repairs, hence explaining why Thomas and Diesel were needed to come help out. This was apparently a part of the plot of the episode before it was changed in post-production, and no doubt this shot of the twins was filmed for this episode. It makes me wonder if this episode had a completely different opening scene originally, initially starting with Bill, Ben, and Mavis at the quarry, and then fading to Topham coming to the sheds to see Thomas. It is yet another case of the secondary characters getting shafted this season, as Bill and Ben do not appear in the final episode, nor are even mentioned. On to As Good As Gordon. In this one, Emily takes over the express for the day while Gordon is away. She's a big too big for her britches though, and gradually becomes impatient throughout the day, rushing others so she can pass, and leaving before her connections arrive. In the music video, Sounds, we get some deleted footage of Emily departing Maron Station with the express. The passengers board, and she departs with no issue. The season is clearly autumn here, so this is definitely from this episode. Everything seems to be going well in this footage, so I have to assume this was meant to take place early on in Emily's journey, before she reaches Kelstorp Road. Likely this was cut for time, so they could move on to the scenes where everything starts to go wrong. And our final episode of Season 8 on this list, Halloween, everyone's favorite. It's Halloween night on Sodor, and Thomas and Emily have to go to the smelter's yard to collect iron. Percy warns them to watch out for ghosts, but the two scoff the idea. On their way to the smelters, the two boast to each other and put down the notion of being scared of ghosts. We have a photo from this scene, a close-up of Thomas wearing an annoyed expression, indicating there was probably more to this scene that was cut out. The story library adaptation of this book, called Ari and Bert, features some extra dialogue here. Thomas says, It seems quieter than ever tonight. And Emily replies timidly, It's very dark too. It then goes on to say that Emily was feeling nervous by the time they reached the smelters. I wouldn't be shocked if this story beat of Emily getting nervous on the way there was pulled from the original script, and the close-up of Thomas with an annoyed expression was filmed to be used as some sort of retort to her, saying something along the lines of, Don't tell me you're starting to get scared too. Either way, this close-up went unused in the final, and the scene plays out so Thomas and Emily start to get scared together once they arrive at the smelters. Woo, that was a lot of season eight. Moving on to nine now, with Percy and the oil painting. Percy brings a famous artist to Knapford Station, and the artist declares he wants to speak to Sir Topham at once. Topham arrives at the platform, and the artist tells him that he wants to paint a portrait of Percy. Interestingly, Topham has a dinner napkin on his clothing in this scene that's never explained or alluded to. Sure enough, there was a scene filmed that did explain this that was cut in editing. A shot of Topham in his home shows him eating lunch and being called away, and he don't look too happy about it. This shot was reused for the opening of a DVD game. I'm sure that there was another shot of his butler or someone alerting him that he's being summoned, but we've never seen it. I bet that this little moment was cut to maintain the flow of the episode. We cut when Percy is worried he's in trouble, and we stay at Knapford so the focus is never taken off him. Next up is Thomas and the Birthday Picnic. In this one, Thomas is to take the Hat family to a special spot on the island for Dowager Hat's birthday. In the final episode, the first place he tries is a field in Shen Valley, but they discover that the field has been freshly plowed when they arrive. Then they try Castle Lock, only to find out it's closed for the day. After only two attempts, Thomas gives up, and they go back to Netford. Well, there was a third attempt that was cut, as revealed in a magazine story. Thomas decides to take them to the beach at Bluff's Cove, but when they arrive, it's cold and raining. 
We have a photo from this scene showing a sad Thomas at the station. We also have some footage of a happy Thomas leaving the station, which was reused in the music video, Every Day is Special on Sodor. I couldn't find the magazine story to confirm this, but judging by Thomas's happy expression here, I assume this was likely the first attempt before he started losing hope. I can only assume that this was cut for time, and I'm glad it was cut. Having a third location in this would have made the story way too repetitive. It's also very weird how it's totally sunny and beautiful in every other location on Sodor, and then it's cold and rainy and miserable only when they're at the beach. I wonder if that bizarre change in weather was also a factor in why it was chopped. Up next is Flower Power. It's Halloween again on Sodor, and that night Sir Topham arrives at the shed to assign some work to Thomas. He arrives dressed up in costume as a wizard. As revealed in photos of this scene, they filmed this scene twice, with alternate Topham costumes. In the alternate version, Topham is dressed as a devil. Yes, they actually built a fully detailed prop of Sir Topham hat in a devil costume. Man boobs, belly button, and all. Only to be used in a single shot for an episode that ended up being axed in editing. So much effort here. I love the model series of Thomas so much. I have no idea why, but I can only assume they filmed two versions because they feared the producers wouldn't approve of the devil costume. And clearly that's what happened, as the final edit uses the wizard costume. I'd love to see the cut of the episode with the devil Topham, where literally nothing is different about it, except for these three shots of Thomas talking to Satan. Onto the magic lamp, the Proteus episode. Peter Sam has to deliver some supplies to the Incline. Before he leaves, he listens in on Scarlowy's tale of Proteus and his legendary magic lamp. Peter Sam scoffs the idea, but later starts to believe the lamp is real when he gets lost in the night and needs help. After he is saved, he returns home with a new outlook. Maybe, puffed Peter Sam quietly, you don't have to see the magic lamp for your wishes to come true. Maybe it's enough just to believe in it. And the episode ends there. As revealed in footage from the music video, Navigation, there was an entire ending scene to this episode that was chopped, showing Peter Sam returning home to the sheds and finding all the other engines there asleep. I don't really know what Peter Sam's dialogue would have been here, perhaps something similar to what he says in the actual episode, just in a different location? Who knows? Fairly clear why it was cut though, it didn't add anything. Peter Sam learning to believe in the lamp was all that was needed for the episode to feel conclusive, and that was all done in his dialogue to himself. So, no need to keep the story going. Interestingly, this is the only appearance of the Scarlowy Railway Sheds in the entire hit era until season 11. They built the whole set just for this one scene for this one episode of this season, and didn't even end up using it. On to the episode with probably the most generic title ever in Thomas history, Thomas Tries His Best. In this one, a fun fair has opened on Sodor, and Thomas wants to finish his job quickly so he can go and see it. Unfortunately, his job is a slow one, transporting Farmer McCall's chickens. First, McCall's truck gets a flat tire, so he arrives late. And once he's finally off, Thomas tries to rush, but the chickens get upset. He has no choice but to go slow and miss the fair. An entire scene was cut from this episode following this. Night falls and Thomas meets up with Emily on his journey. He pawns his job off to her so he can go to the fun fair. Emily takes his vans, but she also goes too fast and upsets the chickens. Thomas catches up with her and takes the vans back. This scene in its entirety was featured on a segment of Sodor's Special Places a small series that aired between episodes on TV. It's so obvious to me why this one was cut. Emily makes the same mistake that Thomas made earlier. Having this included would make this already very boring story even more repetitive. Not that this is an episode I ever desire to rewatch, but it's a cut that I'm glad was made. On to season 10 now, which, as far as I could tell, has like no deleted scenes. Hardly anything of note anyway, except for one major scene that we were robbed of, and it's from the episode The Green Controller. 
In this one, Sir Topham Hatt is ill, so Lady Hatt leaves Percy with a list of orders to give the others. Percy can't remember the orders correctly, so he ends up sending Gordon, James, and Toby to do the wrong jobs. One of which results in James getting painted like a bee. In the final episode, the story climaxes with Percy on a bridge and witnessing all three of them doing the wrong work. And only then he realizes his mistake. Boring. From what I can tell, they filmed an entirely different climax to this story. We have no footage of it, but we do have several photos, and a rough idea of what's going on here. James passes by Percy, and Percy witnesses him in his new bee livery. A signalman leaves his post to see James's paint job and gets distracted. He forgets to change the points, which causes James to collide with Gordon, and the two derail. Toby comes up from behind. He can't stop in time and crashes into James. Percy, in shock, witnesses the whole crash from afar. Thomas arrives, and Percy asks him to help put things right. I really could not tell you why they filmed two different climaxes to this episode, unless the one that they ended up using was filmed with a totally different intention in mind. We'll never know until we get a script of the episode. I'm sure this whole crash sequence was cut for time, but man, what a loss. I would have much rather had this instead of what we got. On to Season 11 with Emily's Rubbish, the episode that introduces everyone's favorite, Whiff. My name's Whiff because I'm a bit smelly. In this episode, Emily is to meet a new engine at the docks. She is disappointed to find out that the new engine is a grubby garbage engine, and is embarrassed to be seen with him. And what's even worse, Whiff won't leave her alone. In the final episode, Emily meets Whiff, and they pretty quickly leave right after. Two photos we have from this scene reveal that Salty was meant to appear here. What I assume is going on here is that all new engines usually arrive to Sodor at the docks, so Salty is usually the first to meet them. He rolls up and introduces Emily to Whiff. I can only guess that they cut Salty's role for time. They didn't really need to have another character introduce Whiff when Whiff can just introduce himself in a single line of dialogue. My name's Whiff because I'm a bit smelly. Nice and snappy. Now let's move on. What's funny is that Salty is also present for another new engine's arrival at the docks in this same season. They really liked having Salty meet the new guys, huh? Salty is such a cryptid in these deleted scenes. He got so much of his material cut. What a shame. And on to our final episode from the model series on this list. Season 12's Saved You. In this one, Thomas wants to be a hero like a fireman, so he tries to save other engines that he comes across. All he does is cause confusion though. He accidentally has Harvey sent down the wrong line, away from the rescue site where he's needed. Thomas finds the lost Harvey later on, and brings him to the rescue site. Season 12 was the first season to start using CGI. Everything in the season is filmed with props, but all the engines were given animated CGI faces. Almost every character that appeared this season was seen with their own CGI face. Even the really obscure ones like Stephanie got one. But Harvey was never shown with one. However, we do have a photo of Harvey from this episode, where he is, in fact, depicted with a CGI face looking rather sad. I'm not actually sure if this is of some deleted scene or not. What this most likely is is just some random photo of Harvey on the set he gets lost on for promotional purposes, and they added a CGI face onto him for consistency. A bit strange though that they built and rigged a face for him when it was never intended to be used in the episodes. I wonder if there's CGI faces for other characters we never saw. Like Arthur, perhaps? There is another shot of Harvey with a happy expression, though upon further inspection, it is just the same photo with the face changed. Season 12 is a weird season, man. It just feels like a total fever dream. As we move into the CGI series, we start to see hardly any deleted scenes. This is, of course, because everything is animated now. No scenes are completed unless they're a part of the final edit and get rendered. Unlike the model era, where they film a bunch of material and then stitch together episodes using the best takes, leaving so much else on the cutting room floor. That being said, there are a few random deleted scenes from the CGI series scattered around. First is from the 2009 special Hero of the Rails, 
In this movie, Thomas tries to mend the lost hero and keeps it a secret from Sir Topham Hatt, as Hero fears Topham will scrap him if he finds out he is still around. Things turn from bad to worse though, and Thomas decides it's time to spill the beans to Topham. To his delight, Topham is happy about Hero's discovery, and says, We must help Hero at once. This line from Topham is said at Knapford in the final scene. However, in the trailer, this line is being said by Topham in a completely different location. We must help Hero at once. I'm sure this isn't actually a deleted scene though, but just a new shot that they rendered up specifically for the trailer. Probably because Topham standing in full view, looking serious at a signal box, makes for a better visual for a trailer than this medium shot of him in this darker lighting from the final movie. On to Tale of the Brave now, the 2014 movie. In this movie, spooky things begin happening on Sodor. Thomas goes to work at the clay pits, and Bill and Ben trick him into taking away a train, in which Timothy is coupled up to at the other end. Oh, hi, stop. Thomas spots some giant footprints in the clay, footprints. and Percy is scared off by a strange looking visiting engine called Gator, who looks like a monster in the fog. It seems they think my long sloping water tank makes me look like an alligator. As you can see in all of these scenes, the weather is pretty cold and wet and foggy as the movie takes place in autumn. The trailer for the movie depicted all these scenes differently. As shown here, all of these shots take place in broad summer daylight with blue skies and no rain. These are again by no means deleted scenes. Trailers are often stitched together early on before the movie is completed so they can start marketing it, and most of these shots are just unfinished. All the final shots required for the trailer were rendered in different settings before the final lighting and textures were finalized and applied. It's pretty interesting though to see the same exact shots in completely different weather settings. Igor Chiwalev, I'm sure I just butchered that pronunciation and I am so sorry was a storyboard artist for Thomas during Journey Beyond Sodor and Season 21. He shared many of the storyboards he did for Thomas online, some of which reveal scenes that were later removed from the final episodes. The first is from Season 21's Confused Coaches. Gordon and Spencer accidentally get their train switched. Spencer gets the express, and Gordon gets Spencer's dinner train. Neither engine are aware though, and once Gordon realizes the mix-up, he sets chase after Spencer to stop him. Igor's storyboards reveal that there was a scene cut during the chase sequence. Norman was meant to appear. Spencer passes Norman, and the snow from his plow is splashed onto him, covering his face. Then Gordon passes him, splashing more snow, and making Norman look like he has pigtails. It's a quick little scene, and was likely cut for time. The next episode is the fastest red engine on Sodor, which had two scenes cut from it. In this one, James decides to not have his brakes looked at, which bites him in the butt later when they fail on him on the hill. James can't stop, and he becomes a runaway. Eeyore's storyboards depict this scene of Trevor hauling a hay cart at the crossing. In a complete subversion of expectations for the first time ever, Trevor's cart is not hit by the train and crosses safely. James flies by so fast though that it blows all the hay out of the cart. Poor Trevor. This would have occurred right after he came down Gordon's Hill and before he entered Knapford, and I imagine it was cut simply for time. There is also this scene at Knapford. A passenger is holding a basket with a puppy inside it. The puppy sees James coming and ducks from view. James swooshes through the station, spinning Sir Topham hat around. His assistant hands him his hat, and the puppy pops out of it. This scene was completely changed in the final edit. Now there's no one that spots James approaching. Topham is standing at the platform with a clipboard. James zips by behind him and spins him around. The scene ends with him shouting, James! In the background, we can see his top hat got stuck on one of his assistant's heads, and the other is trying to pull it off him. I imagine this was changed just to keep the scene fast paced, so we don't cut away to a different character's POV that slows things down. Moving on to the Big World Big Adventures movie from 2018. The production of this movie was pretty rushed, and a lot of animation tests occurred before the final character designs and scenes were approved. In an early promotional trailer for the movie, 
we're shown this shot of Thomas meeting Nia at a junction in Kenya. This is not a shot from the film. And what's interesting about this is Nia is in a completely different livery from her final one. She's solid orange here with yellow lining around her tanks. We also have all these shots of her and Thomas running parallel through the desert, and this shot of them in a parade in Rio de Janeiro, all scenes that didn't occur in the movie. And again, Nia is in her original livery here. We also have this shot of Thomas passing the Golden Gate Bridge, again, not in the movie, and this little scene of Thomas meeting Yang Bao somewhere in China. The ground starts to rumble, and Yang Bao shouts at Thomas to look out. All of these were simply made for publicity, to market the movie and get investors involved. These are indeed all locations that appear in the movie, but none of these scenes actually play out like this. It's also worth noting that the lighting is notably different in all these shots than the lighting that they went with in the final film. The lighting here looks more like Journey Beyond Sodor, meaning these shots were likely made really early on, probably around the time they decided to cut season 21 short to start production. However, there is one actual deleted scene from this movie. A full, complete scene that was cut at the very last minute. Halfway through Ace's song, Free and Easy, the cavalcade meets Carlos at a signal. Carlos asks Ace where he's going, and Ace tells him he goes wherever he wants to. I'm a free spirit! I follow the sun! And then, we are presented with this. Oh, I see. A sun worshiper. We used to have proper sun worshippers in Mexico. And you know what their faces look like? This. Oh my god. How? Just how did this get this far along in production? Really? No one on the crew thought maybe this was a bit much? I think some of the early screenings of the film did have this scene intact but it was removed before it went onto streaming. In the final version of the film, the cavalcade meets Carlos, and the scene hard cuts to the signal dropping after Ace says he follows the sun. I'm a free spirit! I follow the sun! How the scene got online in its entirety is beyond me. And I think that's a pretty notable one to end this on. There are probably a ton more deleted scenes from the CGI series of Thomas, probably a lot more than we even know of. But please, if I forgot anything here that you think was worthy of being covered, comment it below. For this pick of the week, I want to shout out Gatecrasher, a wonderful fan story adaptation by Suttery Station Master. Going through all the Season 5 rushes for this video put me in a very Season 5 mood, so it was a delight to go back and rewatch this. This is a completely new story, written and directed as closely to Season 5 as possible. It has all the hallmarks. The use of faux Season 4 stock footage at the beginning, the close-ups of Tiger Moth that make it look like a large-scale prop, and that token Season 5 type of humor with all the human characters. I won't spoil it for those who haven't seen it, but this story is a very clever way of bringing in a certain CGI character into the model era. Go check it out. It's a fun time. I don't have much of an update here in terms of new videos in the works, but I am going to be away for a couple weeks. I'm getting married at the end of this month, and then heading on to the honeymoon right after. So things will be radio silent here for a bit. Don't you all worry though, I do have some exciting video ideas that I cannot wait to work on. Ones that I know you will all love, and also have been asking for. There is plenty more to come. Have a great day everyone, and I'll see you all back here in March. See ya!